there is a breaking of the captivity that is coming your way. Hallelujah. I want to bring hope to a hopeless generation to tell them that Jesus is in charge of our lives, is in charge of this earth. Set your mind on things above, not on things beneath. Even when it hurts, as you shift your eyes to the perspective of the ways of the kingdom, it's amazing how God will shift your heart into receiving divine grace, divine empowerment to walk through tough seasons. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Kings will come from nation to draw from your wisdom. You are not going down. You are being lifted up. You are not being terminated. You are just starting. When the devil said no, God has said yes. If God is for you, who can be against you? It's who you are. He loved you. He accepted you. He consecrated you. He set you apart. You are his chosen people. Hallelujah. This is a Bible verse that God has given me, and I feel it is for this season. It's for us. It's for the body of Christ. Amen. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Amen. Next. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall, not, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I feel in my spirit, the Holy Spirit, God, wanting us to lift up our eyes way above of everything that's happening in our world. Amen. Ra Rafaela did an amazing job last Sunday. I mean, she was shooting bullets, man. One of the things that really, you know, she said it and my spirit was like, bah, you know, how we, we look for God in people. Hello. We need to stop looking for God in people. Amen. She said it was so powerful. My question to you is, where does your help come from? Amen? The story of, I believe, King David, some say he looked at the hills because that's where he got victories, and others say he looked at the hills because there was struggle and things coming his way. Amen? Or he just looked at the mountains. I don't know. But as he's looking at the hills, I don't know if it's a monologue. I took it as a monologue. Amen? Because that's what we do when we go through a tough time. Sometimes things are so hard, and we find ourselves talking to ourselves. The only problem with talking to ourselves, it's not that it's, it's bad. It's what we say to ourselves. The majority of us, when we speak to ourselves, we are shooting us down. We are destroying even the hope that is inside of us. Amen? Because we are discouraged, because we don't see the solution. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he said, I lift my eyes to the hills. Whatever that was going on in that hills, in the mountain. Maybe he was a pilgrim going to, you know, to Jerusalem to offer sacrifice. And you will see the mountain that surrounded Jerusalem. He said, we lift up the eyes to the hills. I don't know. But he asked himself that question. Where does your help come from? And I think that's a question we need to ask ourselves. Regardless of the situation, how tough it is. In this season of this pandemic, where does your help come from? from. Amen? Where does your help come from? You might be surrounded of mountains of impossibility today. Mountains of, you know, of struggle, of lack. But my question to you is, where does your help come from? You know, the Bible doesn't tell us what was going on in the life of this writer. But we can see there was issue or hardship happening in his life. 
So you can put yourself there. We've had moments, each one of us, where you can see to yourself, say, God, I don't see no answer on the left, on the right, in front, or in the back. Amen. But we got to come to a place where we say, where does my help come from? I remember there was a, a very tough situation that happened in my life where I look at my husband, no, he can't do nothing. I look at the church, can't do nothing for me. I look at my family, can't do nothing for me. Amen? And God, in his mercy and grace, removed me the, from that place of hopelessness and said, look up to me. That's where your help comes from. At the end of the day, when nothing else is working, we know that there is a God who give us victory. Amen? A banner of victory of our life. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. Amen. And then when you look at things tough that's happening, it says, you know what? It's an opportunity for us believers to say, God, do I really believe that my help comes truly for you? Or am I looking for a man to answer me? Am I looking for a God in humanity? Am I looking for a God in these systems of this world? Am I looking for God in a vaccine? Am I looking for God in the politician? Listen to me. We can't even trust politicians. They do what they can with what they have. Amen? And everybody according to what they want to accomplish. Your help does not come in the decision of the government to bring answers to us. Today I'm going to speak about the spirit of preservation because that's what God has spoken to me. That God, God wants you to know that there is a spirit of preservation that he's released over this church. That he will preserve us. Amen. He said do not look on your left on your right. Look at your Lord. Who is your helper? Amen. Why is he your helper? Because he is the maker of heaven and, and the earth. God said, don't look at mountains, creation. Don't look at things to think that that's where your help comes from. Your help will come from the, from the God who has created those things. Hello, somebody. Are you guys up? Amen. Who on whose arm are you leaning on? Huh? Yeah. Whose arm are you leaning on? What systems are you relying on? Where and what have you put your faith in? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 124, verse 8, this is the response of Cross Point. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and the earth. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. You know, it is very hard to hear news after news after news where there's nothing positive that they are saying about what we are going through. Hello, somebody. I remember a story I was listening to, Lester Summerall. He was telling a story, preaching how he met Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, this man of faith, who raised the dead, who was so powerful. He said how he longed to meet this man of God. And one day he met him. And during the ministry in a conference, he went, Smith or Wills, or whatever his name is, came to him <laughs> and he said, you know what? I want you to come to my house. And it was a dream come true from, for Lester Samuel. Lester Samuel is another big man of faith. So he went to visit him. And when he went at the door, he knocked at the door. And then the man of God came out and he said, what do you have in your hand? He had an umbrella and a newspaper in his, in his, around his uh, hand. And Smith Wigglesworth tell him, I, this newspaper is not entering my house because it's fake news. <laughs> because it's fake news. Hallelujah. But the only problem with now, with phone, computer, everything, we let fake news come in our spirit. We let fake news every day, every second. We even have notification. Amen? 
Fake news enter and enter and enter. Then we feed our spirit by fake news. Hallelujah. Then when the word of God is preached, it comes against this fake news and it takes a lot for the word of God to break through. And the enemy take advantage of those fake news we have received and listened to. Where does your help come from? Where is the good news coming from? Hallelujah. This year we've been challenged to look at our life and say, whose report am I going to believe? Whose report am I going to believe? Amen? Amen. Whose report are you going to believe this morning? Are you going to believe that your help is in the name of the Lord? Isaiah 40, verse 28, the Bible says, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. Have you not understood? When I came here, I saw the throne of God, and I saw Jesus seated on the throne. And, and God was sit, speaking to us. I am still in charge of what's going on in this earth. I'm still in charge of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where a news come and you start being shaken. You listen to fake news, you start being shaken. We all do. Because now it comes from everywhere. He's still in charge of our lives. Amen? Amen. Verse 3 says, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber nor sleep. Psalm 125, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. God is saying, I'm preserving you. Trust me. Regardless of what's happening in our lives in this season, I'm preserving your life. Trust me. Amen? Psalm, 1 Samuel verse 2, 9 says, He will keep the feet of his holy ones. He will keep your feet because the foundation of your life is on Christ and Christ alone. Amen? He is keeping your feet from falling. Keep me your feet from, you know, sleeping. There are strong winds out there, strong and powerful winds. Demonic spirits, they are at work. You can feel it in the atmosphere. You can feel it when you listen to the news. You can see that the enemy has taken over even the media. You can see the spirit of fear trying to calm and overwhelm the world. You can see the spirit of hopelessness, spirit of division at work, hatred, a murdering spirit at work. You can feel it and see it in the spirit. Yes, we are battling strong winds, but you know what? We have a God who is strong and mighty, who is still sitting on the throne. He said he will not allow his righteous not ones to be moved. He will preserve you with his mighty hand. And he has given us victory over and over and over again. Am I communicating? That's why I want to encourage the people of God. Now is not the time to steal and chill and see what's going to happen. Kisura, sura, whatever. If there's a time to pray more in the spirit, is now. You know why? So you can discern what's God and what's good. Hallelujah. If there's a time to pray more, it's now. So that when shaking news come to you, you are not shaken. So you lead and live your life from a place of victory of the cross. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. 
the maker of heaven and earth. You look at this pandemic as an enemy we don't even see. As much as we can do whatever it takes. God is in charge of our lives. I always tell God, I say, God, we do what we can. But at the end of the day, you are the keeper of our lives. You are the only one who can keep us. That's why we must be gate pickers, keepers for this world. Pray for God to establish his dominion over all this stuff. Amen? Verse 7, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Amen? To preserve is to maintain something in its original or existing state. Preservation is the act, the process, or the result of preserving something. Amen. The act of keeping something the same or, or pre preventing it from being damaged. And that's what God is saying. He wants to preserve our soul because our soul is our emotion, our mind, you know, our will. And because of all these attacks of the enemy, God said, I'm going to preserve your soul. But let the word of God do the preservation. Amen? That when you hear news, it won't break you. It won't discourage you. God said, I'm going to preserve you. Hallelujah. He's going to protect your mind, your will, and your emotion. This word means to put a hedge about like with thorns. Do you remember back home? Like, I don't know. Anyway, back home. We have this big fence, and then on top they put wiring. Eh? God says he's going to put like a, a thorn, something like thorn around your head, so that when something wants to come against you, it will be harmed. It won't harm you. Amen? He wants you to be safe from injury, from destruction. He wants to keep us alive. There's an anointing of preservation available for the people of God. Even during hard times such as this. Amen? God said he's going to preserve you, prevent you from being damaged. Corona, COVID will not damage us. The financial struggle that's happening will not damage us. Amen? Because God will preserve us. Amen? Anyone or anything that will want to touch your mind, your soul, your emotion. The hedge of protection that God has put around you, it will not be able to touch you or affect you. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Believe this word, and it will be established in your life. Amen? Amen. You will be guarded, protected. Amen? Psalm 97 verse 10, the Bible verse says, You who love the Lord hate evil. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints, and he delivers, delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Amen? Amen? Psalm 97, verse 10. That's what the Bible says. You who love the Lord, just hate evil. And God will preserve our souls. Amen? Luke 10, 19. Listen carefully. I'm reading out of the Amplified, amen. Amplified, Amplified. I have given you new authority that you now possess. Say, I have the authority. I have the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority. Say, I have the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will anyway harm you. Can say somebody believe this word? So that they can be free from that COVID-19. Free from the fear of the attack of the enemy. We need to believe this word. That's what the Bible says. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reading my Bible. Amen. It says, listen carefully. 
I have given you authority that you now possess to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And I have given you the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will anyway harm you. Why I don't hear a man? Hallelujah. He has given it to you. He has given it to me. I possess it. It's for me to use it. Hallelujah. Say, God, make the word of God come alive in my spirit. Because if I know I have, I possess the authority that Jesus has given me. He said it. I didn't say it. I'm just reading. He said it that he has given us the what? The authority that we possess it, it's in our guts, it's in our spirit. If you are born again by the spirit of God, you have the ability that God has given you. You possess it inside of you. Amen. To tread upon serpents, COVID, sickness, scorpions. We're either going to believe the word of God or we do not. And if we believe it, we have to believe it all the way. We cannot be the word that work according to what works for me. Amen? Amen? You know what? Let's challenge our behavior and our faith in God. When things like that comes on our way, it challenges the areas in our lives where we have not exercised our faith. God said that we possessed the power. I can feel holy cows going. You know, I told God, if I'm going to believe you, I need to believe you all the way. I cannot pick and choose what I'm going to believe, depending on where my flesh, my emotions wants to bring me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the word of God says. Say, you possess the authority. So if we possess the authority, and then he says we have the, the ability to exercise that authority. Say, Jesus, I, say he gave it to us. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will anyway harm me. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? When God said nothing in any way will harm me. So I choose to believe what God says. Amen? And I believe you read it in every translation. That's exactly what it means. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I possess the authority. I possess the ability to exercise my authority. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing in any way will harm me. Hallelujah. So be free from fear. Be free from fear. So God said there's an anointing of preservation that is upon our lives to preserve us from harm. Amen? We have the keys to living our lives here. I'm telling you, the enemy will try to come. Yes, he will. But we have the ability to to overcome the enemy. Are you hearing me? So we cannot believe like unbelievers. We cannot live like unbelievers. We cannot act like unbelievers. We need to act according to the word of God because we know what the truth of the word of God says. We know that God says, I'm preserving your life. Amen? And nothing shall in any way harm you. Whose report are we going to believe? Whose report are we going to believe? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, people of God. Let's stand up. We're going to pray. I want you to pray over yourself. We must refute every argument. You know why I'm so strong on it? Because I could feel it during, during worship. I could feel people, we were worshiping not from a place of peace, from the spirit. I could feel the worship team did, did an incredible job. But I could feel because of the news that's been released over this Alberta. You see, the enemy start working. It's like demonic waves that comes down, down. A word is spoken in the atmosphere by the authority. It comes down little by little. We don't even realize it. Say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God will preserve our lives. He has preserved our lives. We have victory as he has declared it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grace of God is available. God, he will see us through all this season. We are overcomers in Christ. We are not defeated. The enemy is defeated. Hallelujah. God is preserving our lives. God has preserved our life because of the, the work of the cross, the blood of Jesus. It's keeping us safe and preserved. Hallelujah. Every high thing must come down. Every high thing must come down. We thank you, Lord. I want you to put your hands on your mind, will, and emotion. Say, God, I thank you for the anointing of preservation upon my mind. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing of preservation upon my mind, upon my emotions, upon my thoughts. The anointing that keeps me safe and sound. Say, I refute every argument that comes against the knowledge of Christ, that comes against the plan of God upon my life. Every word that's been spoken over my life to defeat my life, I break its yoke today in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not be moved because he who keeps me, my life, He's never asleep. He will guard me and keep me and protect me. Say, I pray for a spirit of preservation upon my body. Against every form of sickness, disease, every form of attack upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. He will preserve us from all kind of harms. Today we take authority that you have given us, God, to exercise over the enemy, against the lies of the enemy. Today we embrace the truth of the word of God. Father God, I release that anointing of preservation upon our lives. I say it is well.
with Crosspoint Fellowship. It is well for our families. It is well for our businesses. It is well for our workplaces. It is well in everything, God. We thank you for the victory of the cross. We thank you for that banner of our lives that you taught us today. Lord, we decree and declare that you are still seated on the throne, the throne of our lives, God. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus upon your people, God. We release the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Cleanse us from every works of darkness, God. Every burden that's been put upon our lives today, I say be lifted. Be lifted every burden that does not glorify the name of the Lord. Be lifted. I want we, 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 we project Psalm 121. We're going to declare it over our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. He will not let my foot slip. He who watches over me will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over me will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over me. The Lord is my shed at my right hand. The sun will not harm me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep me from all harm. He will watch over my life. The Lord will watch over my coming and going, both now and forevermore. So be it in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to give one song to the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to worship and praise it as we mean it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. It is well with our lives. Amen.